we're out here? Yep. So I, I pulled a couple of these panels off. I promise you that I won't talk too much because I guarantee you guys will all want to take pictures in here. But I pulled a, pulled a couple of these panels off so you can see our cutting edge 1965 technology <laughs> and uh, realize that the camera that you're probably using to take pictures of it has more processing power than everything in this room. But with this technology, we sent people to the moon, which I think is really kind of cool. Uh, so this is the, uh, the Apollo flight control room that was used when Armstrong stepped off on the moon. Uh, so when they called down Houston, uh, we landed, I forget the quote, but uh, they were talking to the folks in the Eagle has landed. The Eagle has landed. They, they were talking to the folks in this room. Kind of interesting, if you look at the fronts of the panels for the flight controllers, you saw downstairs that they were all graphical displays and they were being fed telemetry. For these, you really had to pay attention not only to what the vehicle was telling you, but you had to learn how to operate the hardware, right? You, you spend a little bit of time figuring out if I push this button, that's going to show me this piece of information. So these are all custom built, hand built, just for this application. They spent a little bit of time figuring out how to operate this, in addition to all the systems knowledge for the Apollo vehicles, et cetera. Some of the other interesting technology that we had in here, we had cutting edge pneumatic tube stuff. Right? Wow. <laughs> used <at> the <laughs> <laughs> so if you, uh, if you no kidding wanted to send an email, this is what you would use. Right? If you wanted to send an email to somebody else in the building, you'd put it in here and send it off in a little P-tube container. I did this tour at one time for a, a, a guy who actually used to work in this room or he was part of the tour and he told me a funny story about working in here late one night doing a simulation he really couldn't get his back room to pay attention to him and he finally figured out that they were actually all back there eating dinner so he asked for a hot dog to be sent to the front room because he was starving to death and if you think about what happens when you put a hot dog oh. in a vacuum, why that memo came out next week that said, thou shalt not put food in the peat tube. <laughs> when I worked here, they called it female. Female, here you go. Um, so I told you about the plaque hanging on the wall. So if you follow that logic, right, some flight controller at some time during the Apollo 11 mission was selected as the person that was nice that contributed the most to the mission got to climb up on a rickety ladder and hang that plaque on the wall because Apollo 11 was a bump out of this room. That's why this is a national historical monument. If you also look there just to the right of Apollo 11, a couple of plaques, you see the Apollo 13 patch, which was the famous Tom Hanks movie that was done. They did not actually film here. But they did come and they took a whole bunch of measurements and pictures and did all that stuff and then went back out to Hollywood and, and, and built a soundstage that looked just like the controller. They come and they put that right next to the lunar surface soundstage that they have to use to take the moon landing. So <laughs> <laughs> um, other stuff you can see in here, and again, you guys have to read when? 135. Yeah, I'll stop chattering. Some of the other things that I require you to do when you're in this room is to look at the plaque that's underneath the mirror right there. Read that and make sure you get up nice pictures with that. You need to read the plaque that is on the wall over here next to the American flag and take lots of pictures with that. And then there's another American flag over there on the wall that also has a plaque with it. Read that, take lots of pictures with that. symbolic of the red phone that used to be in here, which was a direct line to the White House during the Apollo. You also notice it doesn't have any dot on it. it <laughs> I'm happy to answer any questions you guys got. But I'm sure you'd rather take pictures of here than listen to each other. Say again. Okay. When was uh, this presentation mission? I don't know, but you can kind of tell that by just by looking at the flags that we actually used it in the 80s for shuttle launches because we hung some of those flags up. Yeah. They were using the thicker one up through 1995, 
and then they built a new shuttle emission control that they just took apart. So the electronics can you represent how they were when it would be emission? Correct. Because 70 was the first shuttle mission that they did in yeah. Ficker 1. Did uh, anybody point out these to you before? No. These are the, um, when a flight director retires, they retire his color. Oh, wow. So they retired his what? His color. So, for example, Chris Kraft, the first flight director, the first three flight directors were red, white, and blue. Uh -huh. And when you retire as a flight director, they retire the color, or once they ran out of colors, they pick stars or rocks or something like that. So Chris Kraft retired, and they retired red flight. John Hodge was blue flight, Keith Kranz is white. And then all the others up through the 80s, I don't know, um, I think the rest of them... Ivory flight, bronze flight. Yeah, the, the other ones that were retired were um, are in the flight director office. But these were like the Apollo era flight directors. The one for me. What is the guy's I'm sorry. What is the guy's name? Yeah. He's talking. Huh? The guy's name's talking? Um, Royce Renfrew. Yeah. Renfrew. He's okay. Tungsten Flight on Twitter. If you Tungsten Flight with us, Pacer underscore. Underscore. Tungsten underscore, 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 underscore flight. flight. Thanks. <laughs> When they do the close-ups of the flight controllers, there's a little gooseneck lamp. Yeah. That was put in for the movie to give lighting for close-ups. Oh. Those didn't exist back then. And she didn't point them out? No, she, hadn't, she said she hadn't watched it yet to see. The other thing is, you see there are one, two, three windows here? Uh-huh. Supposedly in the movie, they're, well, of the main Five viewing total, area. Yeah. Well, of the main viewing area. Right. Supposedly in the movie, they made four. I'll have to look at that. Because, because it was easier to make smaller panes of glass or plexiglass for the, for the viewing area. I will have to look at that next time I watch it. But when the movie came out, I was still working here in, well, in the downstairs one. Um, but it was it was functionally and identically the same. Yeah. Um, by the way, the only difference that you could tell was that green green consoles and green name plaques. Downstairs it was brown consoles and brown name plaques. Ooh. Um, but the um, uh, they they went so far as to they went to carpet warehouses out in L.A. And they said, we're looking for 1960s era carpeting that you might have in, in the back of your warehouse. And so they outfitted it in actual period authentic carpeting. Wow. Th this right here? No, this is new. Okay. But in the, um, uh, the reason they didn't film it here is because they wanted to cut a hole in the ceiling for the boom cameras. Mm -hmm. And the tracks across the front and all that. And they wanted to move some of the consoles too. Because I think for the movie they had to basically didn't have that there. If they did it was movable. They could pull it in and out. That's cool.